do distance velocity acceleration and see the connections there. And okay. Then the rest of the unit is area under a curve and volume when you rotate a curve around an axis. And there's always a problem on that. By the way, there's always a problem on this as well. But the area volume is always a free response. I've never seen it not there. Okay. Okay, so if I call, what do you want to call distance? I don't want to call it G. Yes. On the exam? Six. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's recommended if you want to get a good score. Okay, what do you want to call distance? Do you want to call it S or X? I don't care. No, not G. S is equal to your position, because then you have D, 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 T, and it's just not nice. S, it's done. Now, well, we're going to talk about this, okay? How do you find your velocity? DS, DT. How do you find your acceleration? DV, DT. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the acceleration and get to the position. Okay, so this is your velocity. The second derivative is your acceleration. Okay, what's the difference between distance and displacement? Now, you have to know this. Displacement is that. So if I walk all the way to the office and all the way back, my distance is not zero, but my displacement is. Does that make sense? Okay, Scott. My displacement is zero. Distance is the total distance you travel, and to find that, it, you have to do the absolute value of the velocity. It will be in the calculator section if they ask you for that. Otherwise, you got to break up your uh, curve into positive and negative pieces, and I don't think you're going to do that. And then down here, I have a review of when a particle is moving to the left or right. Okay, Sophie, I, girls, I told you to put your phones away. No, not right now. Everybody says it's misintroduced in the comment section of this course. I will give you the, the percents in a second. Okay, well, I got out of 35. So how do you know if a particle is moving to the left or right? What do you look at? If I want to know if it's going this way or this way, you look at the velocity. Well, you have to get the velocity first. Okay, girls. How do you know if it's speeding up or slowing down? Do you remember that? No, it's not got to do just with acceleration. The velocity and the acceleration are the same sign. And we'll do AP problems that we will review this, but they have the same sign as speeding up. So this is all review. If B and A have different signs, it's all written in anyway. It is slowing down. Okay, Scott? Okay. Everything is right there. I'm not going to write it again. You need to study this. We are probably not going to come back to this unit when we start getting into the study session because we don't have that much time. So when we prepare this unit, which will test on Tuesday, Wednesday, or right before break, that, that's going to be it. We're going to give you lots of AP problems to prepare for. That's the plan. Okay. Graphically. Now, there are my regions. And th th actually, this kind of looks like an AP question. Okay, Alex? Looks like an AP question. What is the displacement? Alex can do this one. These are positive numbers, A, B, and C are positive numbers. In terms of A, B, and C, how would you find your displacement? Okay, or A minus B plus C. B is going to be negative. What if I want the distance? Okay, guys, what if I want the distance? It's A plus B plus C. They've had this question very similar to this on the exam on a multiple choice test. So it's just an easy one to write. Because what it's going to do is it's the distance. It's going to flip this D section up here. 
So if I walk to the office, my distance is not zero. I certainly walk to the office, even though I come back on the same path, and I see the sun in the distance is not zero. Okay? But my displacement is. Okay, so we're just going to start with differential equations, and we are going to find the displacement. How do you find the displacement, then, if you're given the velocity? What is the velocity equal to? It's equal to ds dt. So what's the velocity equal to? So ds dt, that's a differential equation, and actually you did fairly well on those. The u substitutions were not as good. And some of you made them really hard. Okay, I want to find the displacement, and what am I going to do? I'm going to do what? Integrate that from where to where? Zero to five. Now, can you break this into two integrals? Yes. You could type all of this in this if this were a calculator problem. We're going to do this one by hand. The next one we aren't going to do by hand. So it's the integral of zero to five. Now, when you integrate, though, that integral symbol goes away. So I'm going to still leave it there. It's like adding two plus three and saying the plus sign stays there. It doesn't. You've used it up. This is an operator. It's telling you, find the antiderivative of this piece right here. So what's the antiderivative of p squared? p cubed over three. Some of you differentiate instead of finding the antiderivative. Jack, what's the antiderivative of this one? We're going to ignore the a. Put the phone away. Yes. What's the antiderivative of one over two plus one squared? That would be too big. No, it's not. You know what? That's right. I remember you were doing that. One over x. If I integrate that, that's the natural log of x. If I integrate one over x squared, that is not the natural log. The only thing that's the natural log is one over x to the first power. That's the only one. Well, I'm going to rewrite this as x to the negative 2. And then what's the antiderivative of that? x to the negative 1 over negative 1 plus c. So we have, and I don't have any space there, we are going to integrate 1 over, what is it, 2 plus 1 squared dt. Well, the h out plus calculation, that's it. But it's, you know, it's just a constant. We, don't, we can ignore it. Let's write it this way. I do have a composite function, but what's the derivative of my inside function? One. So I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to do a u substitution. It's just integrating. So it's a, and then it's 2 plus 1 to the what? Negative 1 over negative 1. How do I know if I did it right? Take the derivative. Some of you didn't take the derivative, didn't check. But you can always check. Now, I know time is always can be an issue. So this would be written negative a. Uh, t plus 1 to the negative 1, or you could write it as negative 8 over t plus 1. Now I'm going to go back to my slides, because I just didn't have any room for it. Okay, so it's negative 8, so that's going to make that positive over t plus 1. And then where will you in, where will you evaluate this? 0 and 5. Don't assume 0 is going to give you 0, because it might not. So this is 5 cubed over 3 plus 8 over 6, so that's the first one, and it's minus 0 cubed over 3 plus 8 over 0 plus 1. And if this was your response, you could just leave it that way. Number you did, and it was just fun. It was not fun to grade, but it was okay because it was right. <laughs> and we could simplify that, but I don't really care. How do you find your total distance traveled? Now we're going to have to do a calculator. It's 0 to 5, and you could put this on your calculator if you want to check the numbers, but I don't know if this just becomes negative. Probably. So it's t squared minus 8 over 2 plus 1 squared dt. Now, nope, we're going to use a calculator because this is a definite integral. If I expand it, I'm actually in worse shape on this problem because it's in the denominator. Now, do you want me to get my calculator out and integrate this with you guys? I'm going to put
puts this into y1. In fact, let's like, do the bulk. So, I'm sorry, I don't have any calculators. Mine are gone. You have to do it with a calculator. You can't. The only other way to do it would be you have to know what the graph looks like. And you have to know what the graph looks like. And so we don't know what that graph looks like. Not off the top of my head. They won't give you anything unless it's easy, like x squared minus t. You know, it's just a simple little shit. And I'd loan you a calculator, but I don't have it. So if anybody has some of my calculators, please give them back. Okay, and we'll go over to line 20. There we go. And we're going to clear that out. The slope field? I use the slope field program. I gave it to everybody. That's okay. It's on a CID screen. You go to program. And quad is quadratic formula. You go to slope field four. Well, I gave it to anybody who had a calculator. And then if you want to look at x plus y. Now, you might have to fix the window. But since we had it here, I know my window's okay. And I should have given you my ACT and AC, a whole bunch of programs. And that'll do the slope field. But unfortunately, you can't um, use the calculator on the exam for a slope field. Because you won't have a calculator handy on that spec sheet. Oh, I'll give it to you. I'll find somebody here who has it and like it. I don't have, I have to have a link. Somebody here has got to have it because I'm sure I did that. Okay, but we're not going to do the slope field, so I'm going to quit. I'm going to clear that, and in y equals, I'm going to put in t squared, but I'm going to make it x. Can I do that? Will I get the same answer if I change the t to x? Yes. So it's x squared. I probably, I don't know if I'm going to pretty sure. Minus 8 divided by parentheses x plus 1 squared. There's my function. I don't want to put it into n derived because I'm going to get it all confused. Would you like to graph that and see what it looks like? My window, let's go from 0 to 5. And I don't know how big it goes. Let's just leave it like that and see if that works. Okay. So, yeah, something is underneath the graph there. So, if I integrate that, we'll go ahead and integrate that one first. And I could have done it on my on my graph if you wanted me to. Want to do it on the graph? So we go second, calculate. And then we are going to do the area, 7. And we're going to start at 0. We can type that in. And we want to go to 5. Oh, it's 35. We go to... Second, okay, so if I press graph, that won't go away. So I want to get to go away. Second, draw, I'm going to clear my drawing. Second, calculate. Integral is seven. It's area under the curve. And we want to start at zero. And we want to go to five. get 35 for that. Okay, now we got to do this again. I got to get my calculator out and we'll do it with the absolute value. Now, would you like to graph that with the absolute value? See what it looks like? I know what it's going to do. Do you guys know what it's going to do? It's going to flip that little piece of dark, this piece. It's going to flip this up. So at y equals, I'm going to turn this one off. I don't want to see that. And then in this one, I'm going to change. Now, you realize that's a thick line. I don't want a thick line. I just want a regular line. Do you know how to do this? I, I mean, I, d I did it first semester. I just press Enter, Enter, Enter. That's the, lo the little circle trace. It's one of those movie traces. There's a dotted line. Okay, I want a regular one. And I'm going to do the absolute value of Y1. Do you know where absolute value is? Math. It's in NUM.
And then I want to put in Y1. I don't want to type that again because I'm going to do it wrong. So go to virus, Y variable. I only typed it in once. Function, it's right there. I want Y1. There we are. So let's graph that. See what I said? It would flip that piece up. And now we can go to second calculator. If you want to see how tall that is, um, I could do that if we want. Let's see. Window, let's make that go up to 20. I don't know how big it is. Right there. That's better. And then we go second, calculate, area. The problem with doing it on the graphing window is that then I have to have the right window. So if I just do it on the main screen, I don't have to worry about that at all. 42.586. So they wouldn't expect you to know what that graph looks like. Let's do it on the regular window, too, so we don't forget. So I'm going to quit. And if I want the absolute value, maybe I didn't type it into Y2. So we're going to go into math. You remember it's 9. And I want to get Y. I want the absolute value of Y1. So I'm going to go math and show you how you can do it this way. NUM, absolute value, and then I'm going to pick up Y1. Virus, Y variable. And then I have to close that parentheses comma, x, comma, 0, comma, 5. You have to tell it what numbers you change. That should be the same answer. Then. That is. I don't know. I have to look. We have an extra parentheses. It doesn't like that. I type it. What do you want me to repeat, girls? What do you want me to repeat? Oh. Are we okay with this? Right. The problem with the graph is you have to have the right window. So I don't like the graph particularly. I don't really care about the height, though. I will, and then they'll give me the exercise. Okay. What did we just find? We found the total distance. And there's your notes for that. Okay. This is going to give you your physics equation. All, you can do this with any of them. And some of you are wondering, where did that one half a t squared come from? Well, let's look here. A particle moves with a constant acceleration. Be careful. This is only true if a is a constant. Now, what derivative is A? It's the derivative of what? dv dt equals negative 32. So, you guys know how to solve differential equations. We separate variables. Try to put your phone away, please. dv is equal to negative 32t dt. And then what do we do? Now what do we do? We integrate this. What's the side? V equals negative 32. Oops, there was no T there. Sorry. It's 32. DT. So what's this going to be? Negative 32 what? T plus T. If I tell you that when T equals 0, the velocity is equal to the initial velocity. And when t equals 0, the position is the initial height. Can I find t for this equation? Sure, I can put this in. When t equals 0, my initial velocity is v to 0. So what's t equal to? v0. It's not always v0. It's only true with a constant acceleration. 
but some of you will make them always two. Like this one is not a constant acceleration in sample three. So no, you don't get this thing. Uh, thing that the zero is always canceling everything out. So here's V is equal to negative 32 T plus V zero. What's V? It's what differential equation? V is the derivative of the position. It should look familiar for those of you who had physics. These are where the equations come from. We start with a constant acceleration and solve the differential equation. So we're going to cross multiply, separate the variables. V naught is not a variable, it's a constant. And then we're going to integrate both sides. What's the left side? Quinn, what's the left side? X. What's this going to be? Negative 32 T squared over what? Three. What's the negative 16 T? Negative 9.8 V is the second squared. You probably prefer. Plus V naught times what? T plus, um, let's call it K. I don't want to use the C because C was something else. Yep, we're going to find it. And how I'm going to find it, I'm going to put in this condition. When T is zero, my position is S naught. So S naught equals, that's zero, plus V naught times zero. That's how you say that. V sub zero if you prefer. What's T? T is zero. That's the initial position. So if you're standing on a cliff or something, that's your height. You might be standing on the ground. Height might be zero. Now the constant that we added on is S sub zero. So this should look familiar to you. Negative 16T squared, because you have to look at your problem. Plus the initial velocity times the time plus the initial height. Does that look familiar to you from physics? Yes, it should. Where it comes from? It comes from a constant acceleration. Acceleration due to gravity on the Earth, on the moon, those are constant. But in my next example, they are not constant. So when you put t equals to zero in, like right here, if t is zero, then my uh, position is three. It's not going to, constant's not just going to be equal to three. Something else could happen. And we'll do this. Yeah? Right here, there's position. Velocity is right here. Now, you may use those if you have a constant acceleration. So those of you who like to use the physics formula Z, you may. Um, on the exam, though, I would do all, I would do the differential equation of extremes for them. Because they always want to see the calculus. So what if it's not a constant acceleration? Okay. You ready for this one? That's the acceleration. So acceleration equals, oh, uh, I don't want the square root. I'd rather see it t plus 1 to the what power? When you see a square root, it is a power rule. Okay. Let's write down what we, we are given here. We're given that when t equals 0, my position, s, is equal to 3. Then it says it has an initial velocity of 5. So when t is equal to 0, the velocity is 5. This is not a fun problem, by the way. It gets kind of ugly. How do I know that it's, it's t equals 0? Because it says initial. It is v naught. Pardon? Because we're doing acceleration, I'd rather not use x and y. You can. Okay, so let's do this problem. So dx, dt, no, not dx, dt, dt, dt. No, it isn't. I have acceleration. So dv, dt. <laughs> You're going to be given the acceleration is equal to t plus 1 to the 1 half. And then we separate variables by multiplying by dt. Make sure you don't have any v's over on the right side. I don't see any. I just said, said make sure you don't have any v's. I made it a v. Great. t plus 1. And now what are we going to do with that? Integrate. So on the left side, it's v. 
on the right side, it becomes that's correct. E plus one. If I had a T squared in there, I'd be in trouble. Two to three halves divided by three halves is the same as multiplying by two thirds. Plus some constant. Some of you are going to want to say, well, that's just five. That would be wrong. You have to substitute this ordered pair in and see what you get. So, t is 5, so 5 equals 2 thirds, t is 0, 0 plus 1 to the 3 halves plus 2. This is not 0. I wish it were, but it's not. So, it's 5 equals 2 thirds. Well, 1 to the 3 halves is what? 1. So, it's not too bad. You have to subtract it from 5. So t is equal to 5 minus 2 thirds. Since it's high, the pi day is coming. But 4 and 1 third. Or you can leave it that way or you can make it 13 thirds. Or 17. Are you Irish? <laughs> We never get that off. <laughs> we, you guys, we have so we have so many. Yes. No. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Two thirds. T plus 1 to the 3 halves, you're not going to like the next thing. Okay. You guys, I still want to find the position. What do I have to do? The SDT has to equal this thing. Now, also, some of you, it's hard to follow your work. I'm not naming names. <laughs> not, just, not just you. So, you guys... Let's look down the page. Okay, so I get two thirds t plus one to the three halves plus thirteen thirds, and I have a dt here. Okay, now what are we going to do, Rachel? What are we going to do? Integrate. It's the only thing I can think of to do, right? So s equals ignore the two thirds because it's not important yet. Now, I've got to take t plus 1 and raise it to what power? Add 1. 5 halves. You stole, you have to divide by 5 halves, but that's the same as multiplying by 2 fifths. Okay. Plus. Oops. Plus. Okay, I call it t1. It's not the same constant. And I know that it went to what point? Zero, three. Well, it's not the same as the other T. It's a new T. <laughs> I just want you to call it the same concept. doesn't matter what you call it. If you want to call it star, we just call it star. I'm making that up. Okay, ready? We have to find that new C. So S is 3. We can use a calculator um, if you need to for the arithmetic because it's a waste of time to bother with it. Let's do 2 thirds times 2 fifths. What's that going to give you? 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 5 is 16. Now, P is 0. And I'm kind of glad it is, because it's 13 thirds times zero, and I didn't want to take much strength. Okay, can we do that? So it's three equals four fifteenths. That's one to the five halves. That's just one. That's zero. Oh, there it is. It is not that bad. So I have to take three minus four fifteenths. So everybody see where you got that. That's 45 fifteenths minus 4 fifteenths. 
which is equal to 41 over 50. So don't fall into the trap that your constants are going to be these values, these initial condition values, because they're not. Sometimes they are. They are with a constant acceleration, but that's the only time. Okay, so if we put that into our equation right here, I'm going to replace this by, and I don't want to write it again, but that's going to be 41 over 50. And you're done. Sorry. No, I have too many that haven't taken it. Okay, we don't have time. I haven't done the part one. I haven't graded it. Taylor. Taylor, what? How do two thirds change to four fifteenths? I multiplied these two numbers. Is that what you said? Is there another comma? I'm not good with stuff. Okay. So you know how to do your homework. Here's a velocity function moving on the x-axis. Determine when the particle is moving to the right, to the left, and stop. I always find when it stops first. So V of T equals what? This is like a first derivative test. So zero equals T over one plus T squared. When is that equal to zero? No, that way, no, it's never there. It's approaching that. That would be a limit. What place is zero? Is it zero? So I'm going to draw a little graph here. Here's my velocity. Here's, oh, I'm only going from zero to three. This is the only place it stops. What's it doing between zero and three? Is it positive or negative? Well, then any value in between these, like one. That would be 1 over 1 plus 1. Is that positive or negative? Positive. So we're only going to go here. So it stops at t equals 0. And it's going to the right for t between 0 and 3. If time should be negative, what would it be going to the left or would it be going to the right? If you had a negative number in there. Because this numerator would be negative. That'd be negative. So it stops and turns around. How do you know it stops and turns around? Just the fact that it stops doesn't mean it's turning around. The signs must change. Okay, find the particle's displacement for the given time interval. Uh, if f of 0 is equal to 3, what's the particle's final position? Okay, so what are we going to do with this? We might need some help. No? Because the signs change here. If we had a negative sign, we don't have a negative sign. Don't do that. If, we're, if, if we looked at its history, yeah, it's going to the left, and it stops, turns around, and goes to the right. No, because they only gave us this. If they hadn't given us that, we would be talking about both. They gave us the domain. So how do we find the, the displacement? We're going to do what? Integrate that. Df dt equals t over 1 plus t squared. So what's df equal to? t over 1 plus t squared dt. We have to integrate that. So the integral of t over 1 plus t squared, that doesn't look like anything in my list. Does it? Doesn't look like the power rule. It kind of does, but it kind of also looks like inverse tangent, which it's not. And two u substitution. What would you like u to be? Sophie? What would you like u to be? I've got to do u substitution, but I can see what this is. 1 plus t squared. Then what's du? 2t dt. I have a t dt, but not two of them. So I'll divide this by 2. So S equals 1 half the 
integral of dt is f, my f my du, and it's 1 over u du. Do you recognize that now? What is this one going to be? Get my natural log of u. Of the absolute value. Do I need absolute value here? No, because 1 plus t squared is always positive. But you know what? Let's let it be here. Plus t. Now what do we have to do? I want the displacement, and I want to find the particle's final position. So that's the integral of that is the displacement. And actually, if I put in absolute value, it's always positive on 0 to 3. So let's put in 3 equals, that's my position, 1 half the log of 1 plus 0 plus t. So 3 equals, what's the log of 1? So t equals 3. So my position equation is this. F equals 1 half the natural log of 1 plus t squared plus 3. That's, that's the equation for the position. So how far do we go in the 0 to 3 second? Because it asks for the displacement. So what's the displacement? Sorry, I have to put it here. Displacement is the integral of this, t over 1 plus t squared dt from 0 to 3. That's the displacement. How is that different than that? This is the position. This gives you the value. Do we have their calculator out, or do you want me to do it? Or do you want to, we can just do it. It's 1 half the log of 1 plus t squared evaluated at 0 and 3. So it's 1 half the natural log of 10 minus 1 half the log of 1. That gives you the, the displacement, it, but it's also the distance you travel. Because it's always positive. That's right. So this, is, so this displacement is 1 half the log of 10. That's how far it travels. But what do you have to do to find out where it finishes? You have to add in the 3. So it finishes. You have to add in where you started. So it's 3 plus 1 half the natural log of 10. So that's the answer of the final position. It's going to be there. And the distance traveled is still going to be 1 half the log of 10 because that's always positive. Let's, let's write it. Find the total distance integrated in your graph and calculate. I think it's, it's always positive. So it's t over 1 plus t squared. dt is the absolute value side of that from 0 to 3. This 3 has nothing to do with that 3, okay? The constant 3 has nothing to do with the fact that the interval went from 0 to 3. It could have been 0 to 10. I don't like the fact that these are the same number. So are you guys going to want to try it? You should get the same answer. I mean, I don't know what that is. Because I, I actually did the definite interval because I want to know how far this travels. I want to know the displacement. So I integrate from 0 to 3 because that's what my integral is. And that gives me that 1 half a log of 10. It's this. It's 1 half log of 1 plus t squared. Evaluated at 3 and 0. Anybody know the name of the theorem? Fundamental theorem of calculus. <laughs> it's the total distance theorem. It's evaluation theorem. It gives you the total distance displacement, actually. But usually they're going to be solved in context, so it will be the distance. It's the total change theorem. So it's a change in your position between where you start at 0 and go to 3. How do you find out where you end? You have to start someplace 
We didn't start at the origin. We started at three, and we added in our displacement. So you're going to run into that in the problem. They're going to ask you for the distance, displacement, and final position. Sometimes it's the same answer. Sometimes it's not. So is that okay? 